Okay, that's very bright. Should we start? Uh, okay. So let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming so late. I was expecting even less people. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Um, we'll talk to you about container clusters on OpenStack with OpenStack Magnum. I'm Spiros Trigazis. Um, yes. I'm Felon, Felon Wall. And Felon is also a core reviewer of Magnum. Yes, yeah, so I'm the PTL of uh, Magnum for the past uh, three releases, like past two and the current one. I'm also a computer engineer at, at CERN and a member of the cloud team. And Felon is a recent uh, addition to the core reviewers uh, Magnum group. So yeah, this presentation initially will be about Magnum generally, and then we will discuss briefly some issues that we had when deploying uh, Magnum in production. And at the end, we'll have a demo each, uh, one from the CERN cloud, one from the Catalyst uh, cloud. So what is Magnum? Um, some of you might not know. Um, Magnum is an OpenStack API service. Uh, it means that it offers, it's just a simple API that offers, we offer to users and they can create uh, container clusters with one click. Uh, these container clusters are a single tenant. Uh, it means that uh, all compute nodes uh, that are hosting the cluster and running uh, Docker Swarm or Kubernetes uh, or Mesos, uh, they are owned by the same tenant. So the isolation is ensured either by virtual machines or difficult physical hosts. Uh, the, the added value of Magnum is managing credentials uh, for the clusters uh, so that users can access them uh, remotely from uh, the APIs that the container engines are offering. Um, since this is an OpenStack project, a very important aspect of it is the integration with other OpenStack services. Uh, Kubernetes has the cloud provider that I will explain later and most of people in the OpenStack world know about. And there are also other um, components uh, like um, Rexray, for example, which is to manage uh, Cinder volumes in, um, uh, with Docker uh, directly and using maybe Docker Swarm or just the Docker daemon. Uh, the main focus of Magnum is lifecycle operations of the clusters. So we don't interact directly with the API. Uh, the interaction with the API is done by the end users, which run their applications on the clusters. And we just uh, create them, delete them, scale up, down, and we monitor the health. And we try to also implement upgrades and more advanced features like having clusters in different availability zones and uh, manage the life cycle of the operations uh, of, the, you know, of uh, the parts of the clusters in different availability zones separately. Um, before going to the cluster template, uh, a term that we have in Magnum is a container registration engine, COE, which is also the identify, identifier noun in the OpenStack uh, client. So if you use the, the common client of OpenStack, uh, to talk to Magnum, you must specify COE. And COE stands for container registration engine. And in Magnum, that means Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, Mesos, or DCUS. Um, uh, some terminology of the Magnum service. Uh, we have the cluster templates and the clusters, which are the main uh, components, uh, the main objects uh, in the service. The cluster template is basically just an entry in the database that describes uh, the different configuration uh, parameters that uh, users can pass to clusters. And uh, for example, specify flavors, specify the image uh, with the operating system that is going to be used to deploy on the compute nodes. Um, options like volume drivers, network drivers, docker storage drivers, flavors, and other uh, uh, gate features that we uh, add as labels, and then they graduate uh, as uh, normal fields. Then there is the cluster. A cluster is created uh, by a cluster template and inherits all the options, plus you can pass some extra ones that I will, uh, we will describe later. Um, so the cluster uh, has a number of master nodes, worker nodes, and 
in the OpenStack, like uh, in the OpenStack cloud, this is represented by HitStack. Uh, so uh, all the orchestration is managed by Hit. It's delegated directly from Agrum. And in the HitStack, may contain load balancers, uh, private uh, networks, and um, um, virtual machines or volumes. Uh, each cluster um, to, 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 sell, to integrate with OpenStack, uh, the clusters need to talk to the OpenStack APIs uh, to solve this and not uh, expose uh, the user credentials uh, inside the, the nodes where maybe the nodes get hacked or in any case they must not put their OpenStack credentials anywhere. Uh, we delegate uh, the powers of uh, the user with a trust user. Uh, with a trusty user. The trusty user, it's a made up user in the Magnum domain, and the trust uh, for this user, it's actually uh, giving to that trusty user all the capabilities uh, that uh, the normal user has for that project. Um, then to talk to the API, we have a certificate authority, uh, which is stored either in Barbican for the more secure solution, or the Magnum database. Uh, where Magnum can also accept the certificate requests so that after uh, the user has retrieved the certificate, they, he, can also, he or she can also, can also talk, to, can talk to the API of the container orchestration engine securely with TLS. Um, the main orchestrator, as I mentioned, is Docker Kubernetes Swarm or Mesos slash DCS. Uh, DCS is just an API over Mesos, but by far the most popular one is Kubernetes. Um, we try to support different operating systems, uh, but the most prevalent is Fedora Atomic, partially because we use it at CERN, and since we validate it and we use it heavily, uh, other users also use the same one, uh, other clouds use the same one to, to have, um, to, for us as a community to, to track issues together and have um, uh, the, the same, find the same bugs and not, uh, just spread bugs in, uh, across distros. Uh, we also have uh, implementations for CoreOS, and for um, DCS and Mesos, we use uh, Ubuntu or CentOS. Uh, apart from uh, uh, spawning uh, clusters in VMs, which is the standard way, for example, to do it in Google Container Engine, um, with Magnum, users can also deploy clusters in physical machines uh, with Ironic. Um, actually, Magnum doesn't know anything about Ironic because it interacts with a Nova API. So this, uh, if the cloud offers uh, physical machines with uh, Nova, uh, with the Ironic driver, uh, this is transparent to the user. And the only difference is specifying a different flavor which corresponds to a physical machine. Um, the first operations that I mentioned here as the last bullet is uh, cluster scaling, which scales clusters up or down. So features of Magnum, uh, I mentioned already the, uh, that Magnum added value is managing the credentials. Uh, so it's a, it's COE, for example, the, D, the Docker Swarm, it's a combination of many Docker engines, and the Docker engine exposes an HTTP API. Um, uh, this API, we protect it with a TLS, which is which, where we use a self-signed certificate authority. And similarly, Kubernetes uh, has its own API server, which we protect with the same uh, mechanism, and we just uh, distribute uh, the certificates across all nodes. Actually, the nodes are those that talk to Magnum to retrieve the certificate, instead of just passing uh, in user data or in any other way uh, sensitive data as uh, the, the certificate key. Uh, other features include uh, uh, providing multi-master um, clusters to have HA. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a very clean way to support uh, the HA across availability zones, uh, but with recent patches from uh, Catalyst, uh, users can specify the affinity between the nodes, so they can if, if the cloud is configured in such a way, they can achieve um, have availability using affinity between the nodes. Uh, there is work in progress to support uh, this uh, more explicitly by the user. Uh, recently, we started to simplify cluster creation uh, by uh, allowing the user to pass the flavors and the Docker volume size, which is the, the block storage volume where 
uh, when a container or an image is re retrieved in the nodes, it's uh, stored inside. So since those uh, fields are describing the size of the cluster, we decided to make them fields of the cluster object instead of the cluster template. And as you can see in the bottom right corner, you can just create uh, a cluster uh, with one command and specifying the size of the cluster that you need. So how does a cluster look like? Um, in the standard uh, Magnum deployment, the most minimal cluster template and the smallest cluster creation that a user can issue will have this result. Some worker nodes, it doesn't make sense to have only one, you should have uh, more, uh, but you can start with only one master, and all these nodes will be in a tenant network, uh, so this probably is uh, backed by an SDN deployment of the cloud, and then uh, all nodes will have a floating IP. Uh, this is the default uh, as the project started, and the most standard way to expose applications inside those clusters is to expose the application from uh, on the host port directly. But this is not optimal. The fully feature, the full feature set of uh, of a cluster looks like this, and then I will move to the optimal options. Um, uh, this again has a public network where all nodes get uh, floating IPs and also a private network which is used to for inter-node communication and it has also load balancers for ETCD in case of Kubernetes or the API for all cases like in Docker Swarm or Mesos, you just have a, an Octavia or neutron load balancer in front of it. Uh, also for extra storage in some clouds, um, VMs get a very small disk, and containers at the same time can be very big, container images, or many containers can be created with many different images. Um, so we attach a volume in each node to extend uh, the storage, uh, which is available for, for Docker or other C, uh, container runtimes to store the images. Um, this is the most minimal isolated cl uh, cluster that someone can create. Uh, actually, we're pretty, very proud of it because although it happened almost by accident by designing the smallest possible cluster, it was one of the latest additions of the Kubern Google uh, Kubernetes engine, which is all nodes to be only in a private network, which is completely isolated. For example, if you, someone wants to do some number crunching inside the cluster, it doesn't want to expose the service. And actually, in public clouds, this is very useful because it means that uh, um, you will pay less since you don't uh, ex uh, um, burn floating IPs and you don't, if you don't need them. This is the optimal configuration for, uh, with a single master in a cluster, which means that the compute nodes, like the workers, are in a private network isolated. Uh, the master is on the private network also for, to, to achieve communication between workers and masters, and only the master node has a floating IP. And then when a user runs an application inside the cluster, uh, he, he or she can create a service in Kubernetes uh, with type load balancer, and uh, OpenStack will create a load balancer with Octavia, give a floating IP uh, to the public network, and also listen, create listeners in the private network. So th this is the most isolated option because from the internet only with the port exposed for the, this service, um, users, uh, um, attackers or, and even users can talk to the cluster. And this is the, the last variation which is for like, like a production application should run like uh, with at least three masters for the control plane of Kubernetes or Docker, an API in front of it the masters, uh, the worker nodes should be isolated in the private network and all services should be, should ex be exposed as a, with a Kubernetes uh, service type of load balancer, which will be exposed to the internet. Um, I will hand it to Feilung now to talk about some features in Kubernetes and what we work on. So, um, and here Rocky, now there are some uh, features that we would like to highlight. The first one is um, the Calico support. So currently user can, when user creates the, the cluster template, user can specify uh, using either Flano 
or Calico as the, the network driver. So that with Calico, you can get the, um, the network policy support in, in Kubernetes cluster. And, uh, and we also support uh, the autoscaler for core DNS. That means, uh, as before, yeah, we just hard code only one port for core DNS, but for now, when you scale your uh, Kubernetes cluster, the so autoscaler can help scale your core DNS port as long as with uh, the size of the cluster to make sure you won't lose the, the, the service discovery. And currently we also support our role-based access control for your Kubernetes cluster and uh, the Kubernetes dashboard. And we also support uh, the hipster and uh, InfluxDB and Grafana, but it's not uh, enabled by default. You have to enable it with the label. And uh, CERN also added the support for traffic ingress controller. And actually, user can also use uh, the Octavia ingress controller, but it hasn't been uh, fully integrated in Magnum. But there is um, uh, Octavia ingress controller already. Uh, and for Kubernetes version, uh, for Queen's Magnum supports uh, V1.9. Uh, and for Loki, we support V1.11.x. And actually, we also support uh, V1.12, but it's not default. We probably put it into a uh, stain, the stain release. And for usage, user can either use um, command line to ask to, to create your cluster or uh, and access the, the cluster with uh, cube control. And the dashboard is also uh, ready by default when you create the cluster is enabled by default. And uh, here is a list uh, for the work we would like to do instead. And mostly uh, is undergoing, just needs some polish and uh, more review. So for rolling upgrade, the, generally the patch is in good shape and we're just doing some testing and code review. It should be merged in, in this release instead. And auto healing, uh, for auto healing, we, uh, we are changing the design, uh, but it should be in stain as well. Uh, for node groups, we are also auto healing. For auto healing, currently there is no patch, just uh, in design stage. For node groups, we also have patches right away for code review, and it's also in good shape. The next one is um, the Kubernetes Keystone auth integration. So the, with that feature, user can use. Um, the role already created in, in Keystone and reuse the same role for your user to, to do the um, OS N and OS in, in your community cluster. So you can see the same feature from GKE, uh, some typical role like um, the cluster administrator and cluster developer, and cluster re uh, viewer, something like that. And uh, we would like also support a uh, premises operator. And uh, the, logging, the logging solution, currently the design is using uh, FEK, FluentD, Lacti Search, and Kibana. Uh, and another work is we would like to add the, the heat container agent for all worker nodes so that we can uh, improve the performance for for bootstrap the, the whole cluster, Kubernetes cluster. And we would like to, <coughs> sorry, to add more straight security rules for worker nodes. Currently, we are probably opening old polls for worker nodes. Uh, in, in Catalyst, we have got some feedback from our user to couple in that. But yeah, it should be changed in in stand release. And we are also working on the 
the self-hosted fly nodes. That means just put fly node support as um, as Calico as um, running on top of the uh, your Kubernetes cluster and deploy Tiller. And another work we would like to do is uh, release all the Kubernetes Docker image in CI automatically. Currently, we have to manually build all the, uh, the Kubernetes cluster image and release on uh, Docker Hub. So um, here are some experiments. I have uh, mentioned that in the, uh, the talk on Tuesday uh, in the journey in Catalyst to deploy Magnum in our, in our cloud. So the first one is um, at least for, for Kubernetes, we want .11. Don't use uh, the OLA or OLA2 as the storage uh, driver combined with uh, Docker volume size. For that one, sometimes uh, you, if you are using both, so sometimes you will see error like you can't create any, uh, any port, any container on the worker nodes. I don't, I don't know the reasons now, but that's uh, the solution. If you are using overlay or overlay two, just uh, leave the Docker volume size um, parameter empty. And that means for that case, your Docker, the Docker running on the, um, the worker node will share the same uh, root disk with the operating system. That means you may need um, a large uh, flavor for your work nodes. And another one is uh, the heat container agent multi region spark. That is an um, is embarrassing bug, I think. Um, we fix it in different uh, components uh, related to heat. Uh, so if you are running Magnum with um, I think before queens, hit queens, you will run into this bug. You can't deploy a, a cluster successfully for multi-region environments because for that case, um, the, the hit container agent will try to may, will try to talk with another wrong hit in different regions. For example, you are running, created the cluster in, in, in region A and the, the heat container agent may try to talk to the heat in region B, and it will get a 404 error. Say, I can't find the stack, so I just fail. So that means you, as long as you have multi-region, you probably run into this problem. Yeah. And there is another um, bug in Kubernetes is in V1.11. Um, there is a bug sometimes Randomly, uh, Kubernetes, uh, the the kubelet will losing the the internal IP and the external IP for whatever reasons. Uh, the pat the the bug has been fixed in v1.2 and uh, has been cherry picked to v1.11 and could be released in uh, v1.11.5, but it's still under reviewing and seems the reviewer don't think is a critical bug, but actually is a critical bug. So yeah, that triggers um, another topic is for, for some case, you probably need to build your own Kubernetes image. Though, yeah, as a public cloud, even a private cloud, you want to avoid to do that but just in case. So that's the, the experience we have got based on the feedback from our customer and when we run the uh, OpenStack Magnum in our cloud. Yeah, do you want to cover the... Um, so s some of the issues that we identified in uh, uh, running Magnum at CERN uh, were mostly coming uh, from the networking part, I would say. Um, the first one was, uh, fr since these years, uh, we've had to reboot the, full, the whole cloud uh, two times, and one for Spectre Meltdown and one for L1TF. 
and that means rebooting uh, the hypervisors and also the VMs uh, that were running the Kubernetes clusters, uh, which revealed a couple of uh, configuration issues that we uh, had with Flannel. Um, but by default, uh, the configuration of uh, Flannel is to accept um, uh, all forwarded uh, requests with IP tables, but uh, when we're restarting it, uh, all the rules were unsetting, and this was causing um, in uh, some nodes uh, to lose connectivity uh, for interpod communication. So pods in different nodes could not communicate uh, with each other. Um, in the CERN cloud, we don't run uh, the cloud provider um, because um, we have some restrictions uh, from the networking infrastructure and we, don't, we cannot provide the load balancing as a service. We have other means to provide load balancing outside OpenStack. And at the same time, we have different storage solutions that we offer to users in the Cinder. But the most critical uh, issue for us was that um, creating uh, clusters with a cloud provider enabled, that means uh, every 10 seconds, um, uh, the controller manager of uh, the Kubernetes clusters would have to talk to Nova and Neutron and check the status of the VM and the ports. Um, uh, that VM had and the IPs. And if that actually, if any of these calls would fail, it would start doing the request every five seconds. So in case that you had, for example, a cluster with 100 nodes, and let's say 30 nodes were down, um, you had uh, different requests happening every five seconds just to verify um, if the, this node is up. Um, this node might be down because um, it was overloaded or even the user stopped it because he wanted to change something or debug something. And this would uh, create like 40% of the load on the OpenStack APIs. Uh, this way, we dis this reason we decided to disable it. A another issue that we had was we couldn't, we, we were seeing a lot of clusters being created uh, and we were seeing a lot of activity in the Magnum database, but we could not identify what's the, st the actual status of the cluster. That's why upstream we are introducing a centralized uh, monitoring. And, and before that, at CERN, we had implemented their own solution that was querying all APIs to verify the status uh, of all nodes. So if you're an operator, you might want to monitor what's the actual status, not only if the VMs are up and running. Um, the biggest issue that we had uh, when we uh, started to reach uh, some critical months and some in the usage of the project was configuring correctly uh, the heat service. Um, uh, as I said, the heat service uh, creates all the VMs, but, the, but not only the VMs, it passes all the configuration and applies all the configuration in the nodes. And each uh, con class, uh, container cluster node has a heat agent inside that uh, pulls the heat API to ask for, for um, if there is something available to apply on the node. Uh, so that means we needed to uh, scale at least to, four times eight, uh, 32, uh, a 32 core deployment across uh, four VMs in all our availability zones and bump the RAM of the VMs to 16 gigabytes. Um, but the most tricky part to configure was uh, we had some issues when Heat was trying to connect to, uh, to the database instance that was explicitly set, set up for Heat. Um, it was configured to accept uh, 1,000 concurrent connections, but um, uh, when there was uh, high activity, let's say around 10 o'clock in the morning that people are in their offices and they start uh, doing some work, or even earlier, uh, they started to hit uh, the DB very hard and the heat engine was actually timing out because it, it couldn't get a, a new connection from the database. I will have posted the configuration instructions in the mailing list and that in, in, in our documentation for this. Um, another issue that we had was uh, that um, some users wanted the, the latest and greatest feature for, of Kubernetes. So they wanted the latest uh, stable or sometimes better release, but others were more conservative and wanted to run uh, in, more, in a more validated configuration their services. So we started investing a lot of development time to be able to select which, exactly which Kubernetes version we want to run in the cluster. And I will have this configurable by running all Kubernetes components uh, as containers. And to simplify our uh, lives as operators, uh, we started using only the stock images provided by the Fedora and uh, Ubuntu projects. 
so we don't uh, have to uh, have our own CI to build operating systems and actually releasing operating systems. Um, that was from our, our uh, experience running uh, Magnum for a couple of years now, actually two and a half. And I will show you some demo to prove that this actually works. Okay. Sorry, I just rebooted and lost my GitHub. <laughs> I'll do this one more time. So earlier this morning, uh, I created a cluster uh, with uh, 16 nodes, and now I will create one more as to make it, uh, to have it building as a demo what's working and what doesn't in my existing one. Okay, the cluster is building, and you can see here uh, that it's in progress. And as I said before, each cluster is a stack. So you can see also the stacks that are in progress. Yeah, I show my colleagues' clusters. Um, now, the most important part that I mentioned before was that uh, you can retrieve uh, the cluster configuration, uh, which is the TLS certificates, uh, to talk to the cluster securely. So this is done by single command. I'm passing force because I retrieved the certificates before. And now with minus minus force, it will override them. And if I export my code config, I will be able to talk to the Kubernetes cluster now. I can do version first. So you can see here that the server is running 1.11.2, and the client that I have locally in my machine, uh, actually it's my VM, it's uh, 1.10. And if I list the pods, I won't have any pods in the default namespace. But if we move 
to Kube system. Uh, so all the work that we do in Magnum to deploy components, you will see many more. Uh, so uh, this is the internal DNS of the cluster, so you can have a, a resolution of services, uh, DNS name resolution based on names of the services that you create. This is the hipster component, the dashboard, and all these pods that you can see here is the CSI plugins for CFFS that was demoed uh, yesterday by my colleagues, but also CVMFS, which is a dedicated uh, uh, storage um, that we have at CERN. Also, these are at the bottom, um, the Grafana and the InfluxDB containers. Um, so what I can do also is uh, I can run one. And now I have a deployment. Also, what you, you can check is the ingress controller that we have, which is in Kube system. Um, it's uh, this ingress traffic, uh, but uh, we don't have any pods of this because it has a sp dedicated the node selector, which is role ingress. So to do so, to do to start using ingress, in, we need to label some of our nodes. So if I show my nodes, I can do, I can label one with this uh, label. And now if I list in Kube system my pods, we can see that I have uh, a traffic pod. And if we also list the services, we can see that um, ingress is exposed with node port, which means that uh, if we create ingresses for the services that we run in the cluster, uh, we can talk to them uh, in those node ports uh, using the ingress traffic controller. Um, I think I exceeded my time. I should dedicate more time for, um, uh, for the demo. Do you want to do a demo of your cloud now? So this is uh, uh, the dashboard of Catalyst Cloud. And currently, because we are using um, Horizon Pack, and there is a conflict between Horizon Pack and um, the latest version of Magnum UI. So we can't use Magnum UI Rocky release. We have to use um, uh, Magnum UI Pack. So it's not really the latest version. but just give you guys an idea how this looks like. Uh, and we have got some feedback from our customer about the, the dashboard is uh, they don't want to, to get too much options when creates cluster, then, but they do want to see um, much information about the, the template and the cluster. For example, uh, when click the cluster, they would like to see as much as possible information from the cluster. But we are running an, an old version, so they, 
there is some uh, information missing on this dashboard. And uh, generally, for create a cluster in our cloud, as, as we mentioned in our uh, Tuesday session, currently in Catalyst Cloud, we are using the, uh, the image from Docker Hub, and we are based in New Zealand. So when pull image, uh, the request has to go out of New Zealand and then back, so it takes a um, longer time. Generally, for one cluster, it takes around um, 15 minutes, but uh, in certain environment, it takes uh, about, I think, 10 minutes, yeah. So that's uh, the idea. Uh, I want to show to create another uh, cluster because it takes long, but yeah, just show you the, uh, the dashboard. I think that's it. Uh, yep. Um, I think that's it. We don't have anything else. So thank you for your time. And I think we have some time for questions. To use what? Contrail? Uh, yes, we are uh, deploying and evaluating Contrail. And we start also looking at the CNI plugin of Contrail to have uh, the unified uh, uh, networking plane between physical machines, uh, VMs, and containers. So we are evaluating it. Yes. Uh, most services are, are in Rocky. Actually, Magnum, that I'm the PTL, is not in Rocky. But uh, apart from Magnum, Barbican, and, and Heat, everything else is in Rocky. Uh, the rest of it is in Queens. So it's Queens and Rocky. Uh, how about uh, Sorry. Uh, in Catalyst, uh, we're using uh, Magnum, Rocky, and uh, Heat Queens because the, the, the market region is flat in heat. So we have to use uh, heat. And for all the other stories, I think it's simply done this one. Yeah, so I think. Okay, so thank you.